This is Biomaker CA. It stands for Biomaker with Cellular Automata. Biome, because what you're observing is the simulation of a simple biome, with energy being generated and dissipated, and living agents creating plant-like organisms, trying to survive and reproduce in it. Maker, because this project is not restricted to studying one biome. In the bottom right, you can see the name of the configuration on the screen. Some may look the same, but have different laws of physics that make it have different properties. In collaboration, for instance, the cost of performing any action is very high, resulting in smaller plants. Other configurations, such as pestilence, may be harder to survive in. In this case, the maximum lifetime of an organism is very small and plants don't die up quickly enough. Some biomes may have favorable laws of physics. Persistence is the easiest configuration so far. Besides most operations being very cheap to perform, organisms have a very high maximum lifetime, essentially making them never die of old age. Note also that the behavior of organisms may vary significantly even in the same configuration. Here you can see two different rounds of persistence. The main culprit of this difference is that agents have a significantly different model and mutation strategy. However, even with such favorable laws of physics, just rearranging the nutrient sources can cause an environment to become suddenly inhospitable. Finally, CA, because every single cell in the simulation is modeled by cellular automata. They are simple models that only perceive their direct neighbors and use that information to update their states and decide how to act on the environment. This means that the behavior of a plant is actually the accumulation of the actions of several individual cells and not an overarching top-down controller. We will go into more details in a future video. But for now, let me explain the basics of how our environment works. First, note that there are several different cell types. Some of them are inanimate materials, such as earth and air. They contain essential nutrients that our agents need to harvest. Agents need nutrients to survive, but also to perform any actions. Earth and air, however, do not produce their respective nutrients. That is the role of immovable and some materials, respectively. In the center, we can see the initial state of a new organism, a seed. It is made of two unspecialized cells. Whenever a plant reproduces, it creates a seed in a nearby position. Agent cells have many types of specializations. Unspecialized, the default state for when a new seed is born or when a cell spawns a new cell. Root, used for harvesting earth nutrients. Likewise, a leaf agent can harvest air nutrients. Finally, a flower is responsible for reproducing. At great cost, it can generate a new seed with a different DNA. But what can agent cells do in general? Well, first of all, just like any other cell type, they can only perceive their 3x3 neighborhood. With that information, they use their tiny brain, implemented typically with neural networks, to perform several possible actions. They can pass nutrients around to other agents. This is essential for survival, since one cell type cannot most extract one of two nutrients from the environment, and it needs both to survive. They can also update their own internal states and change specializations at a cost. Cells can also decide when to spawn a new cell, at a usually high cost. Finally, flower cells can reproduce at a huge cost. Much more can be implemented in the future, but this is the current set of actions they possess. Non-living materials, instead, have typically simpler rules. For instance, the earth falls, creating heaps and propagates earth nutrients, observable by the difference in colors, generated by immovable materials. My goal with this project is to understand how to create increasingly complex life, capable of evolving and surviving in ever more complex environments.
Here, you can see how more adaptive organisms are more capable of surviving in a hard environment. But alas, in this example, they eventually still die. All of Biomaker CA runs entirely using GPU, is written with the Python library JAX, and therefore allows for effortless parallelization of computation. With that, we can discover better genotypes by evolving them ourselves through meta-evolution. In pestilence, for example, we can easily meta-evolve organisms that never go extinct. Or we can select our favorite offspring ourselves by letting our chosen organisms reproduce and choosing the next candidate. In this example, I wanted to see if a plant that grew, exploded in many flowers and then died would create a stable biome. Then, we can see how it performs in a larger environment. There is much that we don't know how to do, and much that can be done to improve this framework. For instance, we could add new materials and see what happens when it's raining lava. Nice try, plants. Let me know if you should go back to this configuration and help our plants to survive in this harsh environment. This is an open source project and we welcome collaboration and encourage different people to try out their own variants and achieve their own goals with Biomaker CA. In the description, you will find a link to the code base, which contains several collabs to get you started. All you need to do is to modify the URL into GitHub to collab, and you should be ready to run countless experiments on the web. This is just the beginning. If you're interested, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and let me know what you would like to see explained or what cool experiments we could try. Until next time!